Okay, so we're going to make a drawing, and it is going to be of a prokaryotic cell. So there are pictures in your book, there's pictures in your notes, and they're really pretty, they're very nice. And um, if you can draw those, then hey, I, I'm, I'm jealous. Um, but a lot of us can't, including myself. And so we're going to draw a prokaryotic cell with all of the parts that you'd find inside of one. And what helps with this is it simplifies the drawings. The drawings in the book, even though they're really nice, there's so much going on that sometimes it can be hard to kind of simplify what is there. And so with our picture of our prokaryotic cell, usually any time you draw a cell, it probably starts out looking something like this. We're going to draw the outside of the cell. And so in a prokaryotic cell, you've actually had a couple different layers that are on the outside. There's one really thick layer that is out here. And I'm not going to draw another layer, but this is actually two objects. And so what's going on first is the cell membrane. All cells have got a cell membrane. And it doesn't matter if you are talking about a eukaryotic cell, a prokaryotic cell, archae, plant, animal, whatever. All cells have to have a cell membrane because that's what makes them a cell. Outside of the cell membrane is where you're going to find the cell wall. Not all cells have got a cell wall, but if you're a prokaryotic cell, this is your whole deal. This is the whole organism. And so they need to have a cell wall to protect them because there's if this dies, I mean, that's the whole organism. It's dead. It's not like your body. You can come over to your body and go like that and probably kill a couple cells, but it's not a big deal because you're built of so many of them. So this prokaryotic cell has got a cell wall on the outside. It's got a cell membrane. Towards the inside, there is one circular chromosome, but that circular chromosome is all squiggled up, and that's because it's being used. It's unwound so that that way the organism can gain access to those genes. And so we've got this one circular chromosome. And since it's a prokaryotic cell, the DNA are not inside of a nucleus. It doesn't have a nucleus. But this area where you find that chromosome is called the nucleoid region. And so we've got a nucleoid region. Inside of there is the chromosome, cell membrane, and cell wall. This area that is to the outside is definitely not empty. It's extremely full of things, but it doesn't have any major organelles inside of it because it is a prokaryotic cell. And so this is the cytoplasm of that cell. And so this is the liquid interior where you're gonna find enzymes and, and key metabolic reactions occurring. All throughout that cytoplasm are these little dots. They're all over the place. There's dejillions of them. And all of these little dots are ribosomes, R-I-B-O-S-O-M-E-S, -E ribosomes. And so there's ribosomes all over the place inside of the cytoplasm. <clears throat> and so I just picked one and, and labeled it. So because we have such a thick exterior that's going to protect this cell, these two things together are oftentimes called the capsule. They have a special name just because they are so thick and massive and tough. Um, and so we call them the capsule. Outside of the cell, it needs to be able to move around. And so most bacteria, they're going to either just kind of float with the breeze. They're not going to have any way to move. But if they do have a way to move, it's going to be with these two whip-like whip -like structures. And those are called flagella. And so our prokaryotic cell has got flagella on the outside. The final thing that we're going to draw is <clears throat> something called the sex pili. And they're all over the place. They're these huge columns that come out, and they're going to go in every direction. It's going to make your drawing all of a sudden look really ugly. But they stick out in every direction, and bacteria have them everywhere. And their function is to just kind of like stick out into space so that one day, hopefully, they can make contact with another bacterial cell. And so that might seem like unnecessary. Why do you need to do this? You've got flagella. Like, why does it need to do this? But what's going on is that if you're a bacterium, you're super, super small. Bacteria are tiny. If your cells are the size of the school, a bacteria would be the size of you just for scale. So bacteria are these itsy bitsy tiny little organisms. And so 
if you have, you know, a couple million bacteria on the head of a pin, it might seem like, oh, well, all those bacteria, they're really squished together on the head of the pin. But that's only because we're thinking about it at our scale. From the perspective of the bacterium, the head of that pin is an enormous place. And for them, life is very lonely, even though they might, you know, spend their entire lifespan within an area of space smaller than the tip of this marker. For them, it will seem like a massive amount of area. And so it's unlikely that they're actually going to bump into another bacterial cell. And so they have these things called sex pili that stick out into space, and they're hoping that they can make contact with another bacterial cell. If they do, then that cell, so here's, let's imagine this is another sex pili from a different cell. It'll make contact with the one from over here, and these aren't actually sticks, they're more like tubes. And so... If they actually make contact, DNA is going to travel from the cytoplasm into this guy and go over to that other bacterial cell. And then DNA is going to come from that bacterial cell over here into the cytoplasm. And they're going to exchange DNA. And if they're exchanging DNA, exchanging genetic information, that's sex. And so they're going to be able to have sex that way. So these sex pili are just sticking out, hoping that one day they bump into another bacterial cell. They may never do that, but that's what they're there for. And so that's going to be the last part that we draw. So we've got flagella, sex pili on the outside that help kind of with locomotion and contact with other cells. The capsule is made of the cell wall, which is very thick, and the cell membrane just to the inside of that. Inside of the cell, you've got this watery cytoplasm, which has millions and millions of ribosomes floating around inside of it. And within a particular area, the nucleoid region, is where you're going to find that one single circular chromosome that contains all of the genetic information for this bacterial cell.